So in this video, I'm going to discuss a very interesting concept which I think is exclusive to the Vapor framework, that is futures and promises. So before we begin, let me give you guys a basic overview of synchronous and uh, in asynchronous networking. So in a synchronous environment, when you make a network call request, the main thread of the server is blocked until you get that response. But in an asynchronous environment, the main thread is not blocked. Rather, that the request is sent to secondary threads until we get the response. So in asynchronous environment, we use multiple threads. But there is an issue here that there is a limit to the, how many threads a server can have. And also creating threads uses a lot of resources and switching context, context between the threads is very expensive and ensuring all of your data access are thread safe is a very time consuming process. So this is where the concept of futures and promises comes in. In a synchronous environment, if you use this method, we'll make the database query and get, get an array of products in response. But in an asynchronous environment, we'll wrap that product response in a future, which means to set it aside until we get that response. So in order to essentially put aside a request while it waits for the response, you must wrap it inside a promise that you will resume work on it once, the, once it receives the response. So working with futures can be confusing at first, but uh, since Vapor uses them extensively, they'll quickly become second nature. So in most of the cases, when you receive a future from a function, you want to do something with the actual result inside the future. Since the result of the function hasn't actually returned yet, you provide a callback to execute when the future completes. So in the previous example that I showed you, when the program reaches get all products function, it makes a database request on the event loop. An event loop processes work and in simplistic terms, it can be thought of as a thread. So get all product, get all products function doesn't return the actual data immediately and returns a future instead. This means that the event loop pauses execution of that code and works on any other code that is queued up. Now, if the callback calls another function that returns a future, you can provide another callback inside the original callback to execute when the second future completes. So this is how you will end up chaining and nesting a lot of different callbacks. Now, Vapor provides a number of convenience functions for working with futures to avoid the necessity of dealing with them directly. Now, since we had wrapped our object inside a future, we need to resolve it back to the actual data after the response is received. So this is done using two main functions that are flat map to and map to. Flat map to executes on a future and returns another future. The callback received receives the resolved future and returns another future. And in map to executes a future and returns another future. The callback receives the resolved future and returns a type other than the future, which map to then wraps in a future. So both choices take a future and produce a different future, usually of different type. So to reiterate, the difference is that if a callback that processes the future result returns a future, then you can use flat map two. And if the callback returns a type other than the future, then you can use map two. So sometimes in some of the cases, you don't really care about the result of the future. You only care that this function has been executed successfully. So in that case, you can use the transform to function. And uh, well, there are times when you must wait for the num a number of futures to complete. And uh, one example occurs when you're saving multiple models in a database. In that case, you can use the flatten on function. And sometimes you just need to create your own futures. Uh, for example, if an if statement returns a non-future and the else block returns a future, the compiler will complain that uh, they must be of the same type. So to fix this, we can con con convert the non-future into a future. And sometimes you want to execute something no matter what the outcome of the future will be. So you may need to close the connection, trigger a notification or just log that the future has been executed. So for this, we use the always callback. 